a winning day for the bulls. U.S. markets higher today. The S&P 500 hitting its two and a half month high. Is it an opportunity to put new money to work right here? All right. Well, joining us as we get ready for the uh, the panel discussion between Bob Rubin and Hank Paulson, we got Tom Belises from John Thomas Financial, Mark Harris of RBC Capital Markets. Also joining me here at the big board. Also with us today is Anthony Chan from Chase Wealth Management. Gentlemen, welcome all of you. Mark, why we've had a two day rally here amidst lots of rather lackluster economic data. The beige book was it just that beige. Mm -hmm. Why are we rallying? Isn't this uh, isn't this kind of exactly what we've been going through consistently, Bill? I mean, we're, we're in a situation where there is no other place to go in global markets than U.S. equities. Uh, and while it may be lackluster, the reality is it's not completely falling out of bed. Earnings are coming in strong. Balance sheets are fortressed. And the reality is it's an asset class that's still working for people regardless. And Tom, this is the argument you've been making all along about why you're in this market now. Absolutely. I think he makes a lot of great points. I mean, 64% of all the earnings in the S&P 500 have beat. Only 18% have missed. So people are recognizing, realizing that it's maybe not so bad out there and they're going into the marketplace. And I think with everything that's happening, it looks much better going forward. Yeah. In terms of your, your seat uh, at, at Wealth Management, are you seeing investors today have uh, less risk adversity? Are, are they starting to put money to work? I know dividend payers are a big area uh, for, uh, for uh, accumulation, but where are you seeing the money move right now? Well, right now we're seeing uh, retail investors uh, getting a little bit interested in the market. I think that the environment is getting a little bit better. Uh, certainly the Bernanke put is uh, quite uh, helpful. Uh, Bernanke certainly has made it very clear in the last two days that if things were to deteriorate, someone is minding the store, there are adults in charge, and therefore it makes people feel and investors feel a little bit more comfortable that it is safe to get back in the water. No question, but, Anthony. I mean, we've got a lot of uncertainties out there uh, in terms of, I'm sorry, Bill, we've got uh, uncertainties. What, what is going to be the catalyst, do you think, to keep the money uh, moving? Or do you think we're going to see sort of a flat market? Or what, what's your performance expectation rest of the year? That, that question is for me? Yep. Yeah. Well, I think the catalysts are certainly going to be faster economic growth. If we start to see employment growth uh, start to pick up, first of all, the housing market is going to do a little bit better. Right. We know that the housing market is picking up, but it's going to pick up a lot faster if we start to see employment growth right. picking up. Gentlemen, thank you all Anthony, for joining us. We've got to move along here. Maria? Yeah, we do. Two Thank Treasury you. Secretaries about to weigh in. Two Treasury Secretaries about to weigh in on the political and economic challenges facing this country. Let's listen in to Hank Paulson and Bob Rubin here right now at Delivering Alpha as they take the stage to talk about the economic issues of the day. Let's see. Frankly, we were afraid that was going to happen. We have a line of major thunderstorms coming through this portion of the New York City area, and we're having a problem with the satellite to feed out of the Pierre Hotel there where the Alpha Conference is underway. We will get back to that panel discussion. It's scheduled to last for quite a while there. We'll hear more from the former Treasury Secretaries uh, uh, and get their view of the current economic crisis around the world right now. But as we head toward the close, uh, we're up 91 points here. I still have Tom Belize and Mark Harris with me here as we head toward this close. And, you know, to Anthony Chan's point earlier, this Bernanke put that still is the, exists, markets do love more liquidity and what the Fed can do to bring rates down. But does, does that solve the underlying problem? I mean, the, the markets are rallying, but do they deserve to rally right now, Mark? Frankly, frankly, I, I don't think they deserve to rally. I think we deserve to be trading in a range, as I said. You know, yes, are, are U.S. equities a good asset class? Yes. But the reality is uh, there is no more ammunition left in the gun. Um, you know, we get these fits and spurts. We get a little bit of, of, uh, of liquidity-driven impetus. The markets go up for a day. But look at how, what happens. Every time this happens now, we get shorter and shorter periods of positive reaction to it. It lasts a day, and then we move on. I mean, it's a very headline-driven market. I mean, but what would change your uh, view of this market, Tom Belises? You have been right. You've been, you know, moving into this market. You feel like you're, you're optimistic that it's going to go higher from here, despite the dismal uh, outlook on, on the economy and the fiscal cliff problems right. and all that. What would change your mind? You know, any big earnings disappointments from some bellwethers would change our view. But up until this point, I think everyone has underestimated the strength of the U.S. economy. I mean, corporations are strong. They've been doing well under the distress of what's been going on in the global markets. I mean, all the doomsayers out there that the world's coming to an end, the end of the euro, the U.S. economy is going to go back into a collapse. They've been all wrong. They've been positioned so negatively. So that way, you know, all the short interest in the market has been going the opposite direction and it's been causing liquidity and people to get more confident going into the marketplace. 
you, you have to say though, Tom, I mean, we're, we're seeing a waterfall of events going into the end of the year, right? We've got the fiscal cliff, we've still got Europe to resolve, I and mean, we've got a lot of things hanging out there that would cause all of us some degree of concern, right? As it, as it relates to just maybe we start to go into recession or we're already in one to a small degree. The very good points, and I can add to that, that it's only going to come down to the elections in November. You know, a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines and waiting to see what happens come November. If we have a new administration in the White House, a lot of the economic activity and entrepreneurial demand that's been sitting on the sidelines could plow into this market and take this market much higher from these current levels. Yeah, but you know, congressional gridlock doesn't go away necessarily, does it? I mean, that's what's holding anything up I, anyway, right? I think that's true. I, I mean, that, that would fundamentally be my concern, along with the fact that Europe isn't going away no matter what they do. I mean, when, when you're running at, at Spanish levels that, that look like not recession, but depression in terms of the unemployment, those are things that aren't going to get resolved in the course of the next few months. So I, I do have a concern that there's a, still a structural issue out there, but it still feels like the best house in the bad neighborhood to be in U.S. Equities. Very good point. About 90 seconds left in the trading session here with the Dow up 95 points. My friend, the uh, CBC market analyst and floor trader Peter Cost is here. Peter, what's your version of why this market's doing what it's doing? Can we continue this rally or is this just headline driven and we can change on a to the markets. Joining us now is Mandy Drury. Also with us, we got Tom Belises from Sean Thomas Financial, Mark Harris from RBC Capital Markets, and Anthony Chan from Chase Wealth Management. And Mandy, I mean, this rally just seems to defy gravity in many, uh, for many reasons. The only thing you can hang your hat on today were the home construction numbers. Yeah, and they were really a bright spot, and increasingly what we're seeing in what would otherwise be a fairly sluggish economy, autos and also increasingly and surprisingly housing seems to be the bright spot that we can latch on to. But I just want to make a, a, a point about how you were saying, you know, we've got this rally going on, but no one can really exactly hang their hat on why. And my, my, my two cents worth on this topic is that we're kind of rallying for the wrong reasons. Remember yesterday we were rallying because Ben Bernanke came out with, you know, not a very good assessment of the economy. You know, things right. are kind of getting worse. But the market rallied because they were saying, oh, well, it's rallying for the wrong reasons. Not only is Mark Harris agreeing with you, he's taking notes on what you're saying there. You agree, don't you? I, I do. I do fundamentally. No, I, I was. I actually had another thought in my head, but yes, I do well, actually agree with that. Share that with us. Well, Mark. you know what? Here's what I was thinking. There is a disconnect going on in this market right now. Bond market, stock market. The bond market is strong. The equity market is strong. How can that continue on from here? I, I think there is something that's going to begin to break apart here. That's what I'm beginning to get a little bit concerned with. Anthony to be honest. Chan, do you agree? Well, my feeling is that the market right now is in fact comforted by the fact that uh, the Fed is not going to pursue a policy of benign neglect. That is that they're going to make sure that if things were to deteriorate, they certainly are ready to act. And that's encouraging because keep in mind that before Ben Bernanke spoke, the concern was that the economy would deteriorate and nobody would come to the party. Nobody would do anything about it. Now that we know that policymakers, whether it be the Federal Reserve, whether it be the European Central Bank, whether it be the Bank of England, are in fact in the game and ready to act, that is new information and that's encouraging. Yeah, I will say, I mean, all day we've been uh, hosting the, deli the Delivering Alpha conference there at the Pierre Hotel uh, in New York City, and there's been no shortage of investment ideas. I mean, there are plenty of opportunities. You know, Tom, you've made the point before that, that this market is inexpensive. It, 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 it is cheap by historical levels. Where do you see value right now that you want to buy? I mean, Anthony hit it hit the nail right on the head. I mean, you've had a big part of the economic puzzle that's been missing for quite some time, housing. Housing has been recovered for a year and a half. We've been buying real estate, healthcare, selective technology companies have been doing very well. So there's a lot of opportunities despite what's going on out there that investors could put money to work and make money in this current environment. Where we, I mean, you're the guy that's kind of looking with the cloud over your head on the, on the market right now, but are you? do you see opportunities right now, Mark Harris? I, I, I do. Look, in every market, you can always find the opportunities, right? Do, do I think that, that dividend stocks are still going to do well? Do I think you can look at a name like a, a Home Depot uh, with the kind of numbers we've had that actually is continuing to hang in there pretty well? Uh, do I think you can continue to look at some resource stocks, actually, at these levels with, uh, with oil looking like it's finally found a floor and natural gas beginning to lift up? I, I do. I think these are some of the areas that you can begin to sort of tiptoe back into uh, if, if you feel like you want to be in equities. And Anthony Chan, where are you looking right now? I love that theme of the housing recovery, whether it be the housing depot uh, that uh, Tom just mentioned, uh, or other companies associated with the uh, recovery in housing. Keep in mind that at the peak of the housing uh, boom, housing was 6% of the overall economy. Today it's 2.3%. It's not going up to 6%, but we are seeing some movement up there. Keep in mind that household formations are very, very weak, even though population has continued to grow. At the 
point where the economy starts to improve, those household formations are going to have to catch up to population, and that's certainly going to be translated into this housing recovery theme uh, that, that we're talking about uh, this afternoon. Meanwhile, more earnings are coming out. We just saw Mandy, the, the Qualcomm numbers were out. We're still waiting for eBay. We got right. American Express tonight. And I mean, a lot of these are very big companies that have to deal with this slowdown in consumption that's going on right now. Absolutely. And particularly the multinational companies, Bill, there seems to be a very common thread in terms of what kind of commentary and guidance they're giving. And it tends to be, number one, things aren't necessarily so bad here. And in many cases, they're actually quite good here. But it's, it's a problem because Asia is slowing down, Europe is slowing down, and they've also got currency headwinds. Remember that with the stronger dollar that we've been enjoying or seeing this year, this presents a lot of currency headwinds for a number of companies. I think, and I don't know the exact numbers, but when I first looked uh, at the numbers this morning, I think 65% of the S&P companies that have reported so far, Bill, have beaten expectations, albeit lowered expectations in some right. cases. Uh, and about 15% have missed. Uh, just to give you the tally so far, obviously we're still in early days for this earnings season. Expectations coming down, and rightfully so in, in many cases. I think it was you that said you wish you could look at your old friend the yield curve to give you a sense <laughs> of how to invest in the market these days. I mean, it, it is difficult to take the pulse of the economy and the markets when many of the usual uh, benchmarks that we look at have been skewed by Federal Reserve activity pushing yields down Absolutely. below where they ordinarily would be, I guess, right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, you, you have so much liquidity in this market right now, and you're right. The yield curve would be our friend at this time, but we can't point to it. It's at, I mean, when, when you're at zero, there's no other place to go. And, and as a result, it gets back to where we started a lot of this discussion. Where else are you going to go? It's here. It's U.S. equities. You know, does it feel good to be in Europe equities? Not particularly. You know, China right now, India beginning to fall over. I mean, these are, these are pretty obvious arguments around why this asset class is continuing to work, regardless of the, my cloud. Would you, you invest it. internationally, Tom? You I look think through chaos comes opportunity. I think there's certain select areas globally where you can invest, but you have to be careful. I mean, I think the area to invest now is in the U.S. I think we're, that's where people should focus on until the air clears over in Europe and what's going on. And Anthony Chan, same question to you. Would you be looking overseas? I mean, we, we got the China GDP numbers last Friday. They were about as expected. It's obvious things are slowing down there. We all know about the problems in Europe, but I've heard from so many people who say there are so many companies that have been thrown out, uh, needlessly so, that maybe there's some opportunities there that people are overlooking right now. Do you agree with that? Well, right now, we certainly have an overweight uh, to large cap uh, growth stocks, uh, uh, large uh, high paying dividend stocks uh, in the United States. We have an, a regional uh, tilt, uh, uh, but we certainly are looking overseas because uh, when you look at what's going to happen over the next five, ten years, that's where the growth is going to come from. Remember, those emerging markets grow a lot faster, and if they grow a lot faster, right. they're going to uh, they're going to get uh, larger capital gains uh, over the next several years. So you can't ignore them. The, the issue is, let's look for a good entry point. All right, guys, stay right there. We're going to come back in a minute here, but we do have all these earnings that are being released, and we want to get to many of those right now and figure out what they mean. John Ford is standing by with some of those, including, uh, what, Qualcomm and a little company called IBM, too, right? John, thank you very much. It, it's a theme we've been hearing a lot this earnings season. Revenue coming in disappointing, but the bottom line number hitting the, the estimates. And I think, Mark Harris, it points to how uh, vigilant companies are on, on the cost basis right now. They're trying to keep them as, as uh, low as they can because revenue does come in less than expected. Absolutely. It's the efficiency. I mean, it's the problem we've got in the, in the, in the job market right now, right? Everyone's keeping it tight. They're not doing the hiring that everybody would like to see to begin to pick it up. And it's playing through in numbers. However, another theme that comes out of that that strikes me, and again, it's been consistent, is the problem isn't this quarter. This quarter generally, as somebody pointed out earlier, it's fine. It's the guidance. Right. The guidance just slowly but surely ticking down one by one by one. And that's exactly what these two numbers are showing exactly that across trends. In fact, I was going to ask you about that, Anthony Chen. You know, the, the guidance, we, we have to... I don't know how, how a CFO provides guidance when you don't know what the tax basis is going to be, you know, the fiscal cliff issues out there, you had all the headline-driven news that goes on right now. Guidance has to be a nightmare for a lot of companies right now. No, I think you're right. Uh, it's very challenging to put out guidance in an environment of so much uncertainty, but I'm really impressed by the fact that even though revenues are coming in light, you saw the, the, the example with IBM, and that's true with a lot of other companies, uh, the profits are strong. And what does that tell you? Bill, what it tells you is that as the economy worldwide and in the United States starts to pick up, even if it picks up just a little bit, we're going to see those profits really explode.